Was at least a good game, like close to the whole like. Oh, was he going to play team? Oh, no shit. Yeah, he was. 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 He you just said it was OT. Tired and overtime. Oh, and overtime. Really good second. Holy shit! Yeah, it's really wild. We came out ten and zero at first, and then they scored ten three, and those and they they put up thirty one answer points, and uh, after that it was it was just ten and zero halfway through the third. Yeah, it was like it was a good game. Hey, what did they just go like? Oh, we're gonna let you think you're gonna win, and then they're like, wow, and then they're like, wow. Yeah. The queen log on her before it's Achilles, so that was nice. Oh. Why are you wishing harm on other football players? No, I'm saying he got hurt. What he's saying, he's and you said, and that's nice. Meant to start testing. Oh, it's a Niners play. Okay. Yeah, I'm out of touch. <laughs> uh, give me Joe Montana and shit like that. I would say Terrell Owens, but he changed teams at one point, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's on like three Jerry Rice, he was a bomb. Uh, this is how long ago I went. Oh, geez. Yo, oh, geez. All right, so we're doing 9.1 linear equation two variables, uh, which will take up a little bit more time than 9.2, which is on functions, uh, really an intro. And so that's our agenda for today. We're gonna hit 9.3 and 9.4 on Thursday. Uh, and then I'm gonna make a video for 9.5 so that we can, you guys can watch that on like, the weekend and get caught up. Uh, I realize this has been a lot of shit. There's a lot of catch up we're doing right now. It's being thrown at you. If you're rusty on math, there's a lot of fun catch up to do. And I'm sorry, I really am. I would like to tell you it's something I could fix or the school can avoid, but it's mandated by California law that we can't teach this course any slower, like over two semesters. So we have to treat it as you came in with this knowledge. And if you didn't, um, you've got a lot of catch up. Yeah, we used to have like an algebra one, algebra two, and that comprised like basically this pre-calc A. And now it's like, here, I can just go. They assume you had algebra one, some algebra two, and it's up to the game. All right, so linear equation two variables, the uh, most common form is the standard form. So you can blame your congressman, California congressman. That if they voted yes on AB 705 or 1705, those are the ones that did this to you. Right, there we go. We're releasing the fucking Davis acid pit on him. What did I do? What did I just do? I told the wrong students. So we got, we got two variables. You see Davis, no qualities there. Standard form is this. Uh, we've got slope intercept form. It is y equals mx plus b. And you basically get this by solving the standard form for y. Or the next one, the point slope form. We're gonna do all of these today. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I don't think they should be able to vote on things and change things if they can't do the math themselves. I agree. <laughs> I don't think they have any, they don't have any business telling doctors how to do medicine. They don't have any business telling educators how to educate. Like if we're not fucking beating our students and they're walking away learning something, I think it's a good day. They're under the assumption every student in college wants to learn equally, wants to learn. 
That's a fucking huge assumption, which is guaranteed to be false. I bet there's someone in here that doesn't fucking really care about college education at all. Whether they're in, they're probably not even sitting in class right now. There are more students enrolled in this class than our president. All right. Uh, so let's just take a look at one. 2x minus 4y equals 8. So if we wanted to graph it, uh, we got our x-axis, we got our y-axis. I'm going to make a table of points. And if you need a refresher on how graphs work, uh, watch the support course video when it's uploaded. Uh, we just made it. Or watch one from a previous semester because we don't really have time to dive into the slow mode of this. But hopefully you'll pick up what you need from this. You get the refresher you need. So what we're doing, we're just sticking that shit in and solving for it. So two times negative one minus four y equals eight. So that's gonna be negative two. I'm gonna add two over. I get negative four y equals 10. So y equals <laughs> negative 10 over four, which is negative 2.5. When I do, that's x equals negative one. When I do x equals zero, two times zero minus four y equals eight. Uh, we just have negative four y equals eight, so y equals negative two. And when I do x equals one, <laughs> 2 minus 4y equals 8. So subtract 2, I get negative 4y equals 6. And y equals negative 1.5 when we divide. We commonly do around the origin, which is where the lines cross. Uh, and we try not to go too far away from it, but you'll see. As you see here, we get decimals. So trying to plot this can be a bitch. I can do, let me change color system. I go negative one and then down 2.5 is there. Zero, negative two is right there. And one negative 1.5 is right there. So like I have three line or three points. So I have a line. I'm not sure where this is gonna cross. It looks like four, but we're gonna check. So table format is our first option. But as you can see, it yields fractions, decimals, or can, which is hard to graph by hand. Do I what? Get no. I wear these gloves because, as you can see, 
I already have ink on my fingertips. If I have the gloves off, I have ink all over my fucking hands. That's why the gloves are black and not white. Okay. Took fucking six years before I finally said, fuck this, I'm buying gloves. Going home and fucking scrub my hands. Wearing ink. Off the bus. What? Well, it was fucking warm for most of the semester. So I warm right now. I'm not warm. I'm not cold though. And it's, but it was like pretty. It didn't get cool until later on. Yeah. Are you ready for more? Yeah. You don't like my gloves, Jimmy? Is that what this is about? I don't like your white shoes. <laughs> they should be fucking dirty. They should. They should not going to get dirty. <laughs> okay. uh, so as you saw, we got a lot of fractions out of 10 sex. Option two is by intercepts. The x-intercept is where the line crosses the x-axis, x-axis, and this occurs when y equals zero. The y-intercept, when it crosses the y-axis, and that is the point where it's at x equals zero. So I will put my line back up up here. So if I make y equals zero here, I have two x minus four times zero equals eight. So I just have two X equals eight. And so X equals four. It's X equals four when Y equals zero. So the X intercept is a ordered pair four comma zero. So my graph was pretty good. I had it crossing at four on the other one. We'll do the same thing for the x or the y intercept. Two times zero minus four y equals eight. So negative four y equals eight and y equals negative two. When x equals zero, y equals negative two. Our y intercept is zero, negative two. Is that other guy the guy that was talking about C4? No, he's too old for that. What? At FNL, you were talking with, about, with some guy about it, fucking explosives about C4 and some shit like that. That's not Kyle, is it? No, that was Jay. That's Jason. You're right, this one's better. It's military guy. You're like, what the fuck? Why are you guys talking about explosives and fucking? Yeah, that's what I asked. <laughs> Look like a talker. Nothing wrong with that. All right, so we got these points. Oh, let's see if I can draw a straight fucking line. When I tend to do these with just the intercepts, I do just the hashtags for the intercepts. I need to go four that way and two this way. Four zero is right there. 
And zero negative two is right there. And if you do this, you generally want to pick a third point to confirm. And a good choice is between them. So I've got x equals 0, x equals 4, a midpoint x equals 2. If I pick somewhere in between here, I'm guaranteed to find something I can see if it's on a line. So we already know this is... Uh, goes with negative two, and we already know this was goes with zero. If I do x equals two, I have two times two minus four y equals eight. So four minus four y equals eight. Negative four y equals four, and y equals negative one. So two negative one. Do I find that on my graph that I plotted? Two, negative one is right there. Yes. JC. I did the, like how you did zero, two, and four. Can you do the same thing on the other side to get the negative one? Or does it not all work that way? Like they're never in between. What do you mean get the negative one? Like. I could have picked the Y value up and down, picked the Y value up and down. No, I understand that, but like, for instance, how do you got it? You got these ones, and you said you could find the number in between those. Could you do the same thing on this side without having to do all this? That's what I just said. Oh, okay. We can. Do, you still need to do that. Right. But like, if I did went that way, uh -huh. this is y equals zero. This is y equals negative two. Uh -huh. If I do a value between them, y equals negative one is between them, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and you would have two x minus four times negative one equals eight. Oh, okay. And you're gonna see that we get two, two negative one. Okay. So you can pick either way. People tend to be more comfortable plugging in the X and getting the Y because that's what we do a lot. Sometimes the intercepts are really shitty. Like they're really long ways away from the fucking center of the graph. And sometimes the intercepts don't exist. Cases where the intercepts don't exist. Vertical lines. There's no y-intercept. So you can't use this method. You know, like if you try to find a y-intercept, you won't. But generally, we have data points, like I said earlier. And, oh, that was the last class. Well, generally, we're not given a line in our lives. You fucking collect data, and you're trying to find a line that works with the data. And so we're going to talk about how to do that a little bit. Vertical lines have no y-intercept, so there's no y isn't relevant. This tends to be x equals a is the equation of the line. And the, the x-intercept is a0. The other one where this doesn't really work well is horizontal lines. There's no x-intercept, uh, so x isn't relevant, and we get y equals b, or our y-intercept. Yeah. Um, okay. On, the, uh, on Alex, it kind of refers to vertical lines as being undefined. Is that? Uh, say something about that. And the lines themselves aren't undefined, it's the slope. So our third method is going to, you do, we're going to do the slope intercept. Uh, but where this ties into it, you'll see this. Slope is goes by M. For horizontal lines, M equals zero. And for vertical lines, M is undefined.
And this leads us to our third option and the one we use the most, slope intercept form. <clears throat> Real life gives us data points. <laughs> And we generally want to know the trend. We want to know the trend of what's happening. And they're even called trend lines. And data doesn't always line up. So sometimes they do the line of best fit in real life. which is a lot more complicated than what we're gonna do. Uh, but we will talk about it at some point in the semester. Uh, the line of best fit is for when the data doesn't line up. We will not do the calculations for that in this class. It just, it takes a while. <clears throat> it's not what we're doing. Uh, but if you're going for more real like real life applications, statistics we do it and stuff like that. Because you say trend lines are a huge part of template our lab is doing. A lot of subjects have trend lines. If you've got data, you plot it generally, and you want to know if there's a relationship between the two axes. Just oftentimes one is time and the other is money or or something, you know, economics, time and money are your two axes. Uh or, you know, shit like that. Uh, or products, product and sales and shit like that. There's different different ways of doing it, but we want these lines and figuring out what happens best. Stock, Stock prices, yeah. But a lot of them aren't, we, we do this a lot, but a lot of them don't end up with straight lines, linear lines. Uh, any, non, any line that isn't straight is called a curve. We don't call them lines when they bend. Uh, so lines are straight. Curves are just worth mentioning right now. So if you see line, it's implied that it's straight. Slope intercept form. Y equals MX plus B. It's the same B. Same B. It's the Y part of the Y intercept. Hence the name intercept. And M is for slope. And slope is defined as a change in y over a change in x. You will often see this as delta y over delta x, where the triangle is the delta letter from Greek alphabet. You may have learned this as rise over run. And the equation for it is y2 minus y1 equals x2 minus x1. Over the week, since you didn't want to see me. I took naps, I played Dark Soul, I played Power World, I watched a few more episodes of the final season of Walking Dead. No Super Bowl party. 
Um, I, 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 from like age, I don't know, when I became aware that young teenage boys are supposed to like sports until I was about, I don't know, 24, 25, I watched football with my friends and family all the time. Uh, at some point I realized the games are fun to watch, but there's only a few moments in every game. They're actually really exciting. The rest of it's a fucking huge time waste. And I realized I'm cheering for a team that I have no, like I was cheering for the 49ers, but like, I, I don't live in, never lived in San Francisco. My brother cheered for Chicago and he'd never been to even fucking out of California, let alone Illinois at the time. Uh, so why do we, why am I cheering for these teams? Why is, why are people so hooked on this shit? Like, like supporting is my team. You ain't got no fucking stake in the team. No, I have it. I don't know. Uh, and I realized I'd rather be doing other shit. And so I slowly like started doing other shit. I'd still watch Monday night football, but I do shit on Saturdays. And then eventually that just stopped. And now I, I sometimes I watch the big game. Sometimes I don't. Every year, I afterwards I'll go look up the fucking commercials because those are usually the best part of the fucking yeah, show. We kind of sucked this year. They did. They did. Exactly. Exactly. Are you kidding me? People are paying millions of dollars for fucking bad ads. It's like seven million dollars. Right? It's, it's always safe. Safe. like safe. Like safe. Ads that are appropriate. Yeah. Oh, it's the one that's fun. I, you know, the new generation, I hate you guys at some point, like, like a lot of young people want to be fucking coddled and like, yeah. like, they feel, what's the word I'm looking for today? It's owed to them. Entitlement. Entitlement, that's the word. I was trying to think of it the other day, I couldn't come up with it. They're growing up in a world of entitlement where they think they're owed shit, they're not. And they're like very narcissistic. Right. And that's unfortunately not true for all of them, but it's true for enough. There's a fucking stereotype. Yeah. And so, like, a lot of them are giving some of you a bad name. Mm -hmm. Some of them can't find their way out of a super fucking bag. I know some adults that can't do that either. Direction sense is a fucking big thing. All right. More on that in a second. Jimmy, Jimmy liked it. What about me? I'm sure you do. You, you, know, you asked me about the sports game. You did. The sports game. Sports game. I'm not the Super Bowl. I just asked what you did. All right. So we had 2x minus 4y equals 8. Let's get this in slope intercept form. So solve for y. We will subtract 2x from both sides. I get negative 4y equals negative 2x plus 8. And I realize it doesn't say why. Now we divide both sides by negative four, which really means we're dividing each of them by negative four. And I get y equals negative one half x minus two. Positive. There was two negatives there. Catch, catch. I did the, this way earlier, so and then I was like, oh, maybe. No, this is the more natural way. Some people just don't get it. And like, if you struggle with the lines long enough and you still don't get it, this may sound kind of fucked up, but maybe fucking a science field isn't real. Because, like, this is about as basic as algebra gets. And if the basic line fucks you up, what's coming on fucking Thursday is just going to fucking blow your head up. Wow. I, I approve, but I don't know that I'm supposed to say that. I approve of the joke. Don't do that, though. So stick with math lines. <laughs> math. <laughs> with an A. <laughs> All right, serious. Right. 
own strong point and not spell it. I was a meth user when I was Jimmy's age. Well, maybe younger than Jimmy. I don't know where you No, not Jimmy's age. Yeah, I quit for that. So the way we use this is we steal the negative two and we make that our y-intercept and put a point there. And we have, we can grab the one half and we say m equals one half. Or I can notice these were both originally negative before I simplified the two and the four. This is the same thing as negative one over negative two. And the reason why I'm saying that is I'm gonna show you what, how you can use both. So like using m equals one half, positive one over positive two. Remember I said rise over run. So from my wing intercept, I'm going to rise up one and run right two. So run is an X direction movement. Rise is up, run is to the right. And I can keep doing that. Rise one, run two. Rise one, run two. You might find it helpful to do like little tiny dots when you're doing it rather than trying to match up the coordinates. Uh, and then I can do the, the negative one, negative two. That's like down one and left two. Would a, would a perpendicular? We're not there yet. <clears throat> Wait for it. Now we'll, we'll talk about that today. So I'm going to go down one, left two, and I can do it a couple times. And presumably, if you draw in your graph right or using graph paper, these will connect in a straight line. Now, this is more realistic with what goes on with data because of where we're going from here. Like, let's take a look at real life where this comes in. Um, I guess uh, we were traveling up the Mountain, I guess, or no? We could do a mountain. I'm not, I'm not gonna give a real life problem. Yeah. We're just gonna look at like if you have numbers and plot like any data set, like you, you ought constantly in real life look up data sets and there'll be like this number of children for this year or whatever you're looking at. Well for that matter, navigating across the ocean. Like, yeah. You can do that across the ocean, you can do it across ground. Doesn't have to be vertical. Doesn't have to be up a mountain. It could be literally driving to Sacramento, which isn't dead north. So we're at an angle. There's lots of ways you can look at lines. So in data, we get in life, we get points. Through observation. So pick two points, assuming they're all on the same line, not like a best fit scenario, any two single points, find slope, and then C, uh, find the equation using
either slope intercept or point slope form. <clears throat> Back to your green drink. Did you oh, pay? I brought my steps to make my own. My, is, I the last time it was black. You said it was here. red. Oh, red? Yeah, because I already had the sugar free raspberry. So um, oh. I have this. I'm just using that cup because I didn't have a cup for that. The lily all red bull, but with some like flavor added. Holy shit, that's a fucking lot of Red Bull. It's like a 20 ounce. Is it? Yeah, with, and it's like when you have the ice and the ice melt. Well. Oh, yeah. All right, so example, let's do some basic examples. We'll start off with an easy example. Zero, zero, and six, negative two. Find the slope, remember the formula for the equation was y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. <laughs> Doesn't matter which one we label point one, which one we label point two. If you do the math correct, you get the same. I'm gonna call this point one and I'm gonna call this point two. So that's x1, y1, and this is x2, y2. Uh, let's see. I recommend throwing in parentheses, because if you don't, and you have negative signs in there, you may fuck it up. It's easy to fuck up having two negatives in a row and they they just look like one negative. So X1 is on the bottom on the right and Y1 is on the top on the right. And Y2 is on the top on the left and X2 is on the bottom on the left. So I get negative two over six, which is negative one third. I don't know if that's what you said, but if it is, that was correct. Yeah. If you did it the other way around, you would have had zero minus negative two over zero minus six, which would have been two over negative six and still gotten you negative one third. That's if you did the other order. <clears throat> Okay, everyone with me? Does everybody everyone follow that? Okay, so we'll do, I'm gonna do both methods for slope intercept and point slope and show you, you get the same thing. So let's start with slope inter, or let's start with point slope because that's the most straightforward one. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Pick a point, it doesn't have to match the same one you did before to plug in for x1 and y1. Uh, we use zero, zero, so I'll do zero, zero here. M is negative one third, I got y minus zero equals negative one third times x minus zero. So I get y equals negative one third x. If I did the other one, I have y minus negative two equals negative one third X minus six. So I got Y plus two equals negative one third X plus two. And when I subtract two, I get Y equals negative one third X again. So it doesn't matter which point you use, use the easier point in real life, whichever problem you're working with, use the one that when you plug it in has the least amount of fucking work, right? Be lazy. Be a true mathematician. Well, 
one was that again? Was that point slope? This was the point slope one. Now, if we take a look at that same one with y equals mx plus b. <clears throat> Again, it doesn't matter which point you use. I'm not going to use 0, 0 because it kind of shows how easy it is. Uh, and that's not a very good, useful learning thing. I'm going to use, we had m equals negative 1 third, and I'm going to use 6, negative 2, our second point. So that's x comma y. So negative two equals negative one third times six plus b. So here you gotta solve for b and then plug it back in with m. Uh, this ends up being negative two there. So I'll add two to both sides and I get zero equals B. So when I plug that in, I get Y and the M, I get Y equals negative one third X plus zero or just negative one third X. The top one seems messier. There's more to remember in the beginning, but once you have the equation remember, remember, ah, memorized, you can't really fuck it up. A lot of students fuck this up doing this slope intercept form because they, they'll know to solve for B, but they'll never plug the shit back in and show me what the line is. If the first one's easier, that's excellent. Because that's the. Uh, there's no fuck up there. There's no way. Well, there's fuck up room, but there's you're not going to forget to plug something back in because it's plug in once and you're done. Uh, if this is hard to remember, is hard to remember, but m equals y two minus y one over x two minus x one is easier or already memorized. They are the same. What? What is this madness? The fuck are you talking about, Jones? So what does Jones say to fractions? Fuck fractions. Fuck fractions. And to do that, we multiply both sides by the common denominator, but the only common denominator is x2 minus x1. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by x2 minus x1, and I have x2 minus x1 times n, which I'll put in front, equals y2 minus y1, and now dump the subscript two. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, or you just change the order, put them on the opposite sides. So we tend to like to have y on the left and x on the right. But it stems directly from the equation for the slope. I feel like you guys need one. Yeah. You're still writing that down, please still continue. But I want you guys to do like a harder one. Let's do three three sets of points and then we might have to take a break in there at some point, but then we'll be done with this section. Well, I gotta talk about perpendicular and parallel. Uh, let's go with... Uh, Two, five, and five, negative one. Go ahead and try that previous thing on this.
So I know yesterday was a holiday for most everywhere else, but it wasn't for COS. The holiday for yesterday is actually this Friday. So if you have Friday classes, there's no Friday classes. And next Monday is a holiday already. So this is a four day weekend for COS. What makes a really good game show snack? Chili cheese and or chili and cream cheese melted together. Get a dip use like corn chips with it. Yeah. We'll use some chili with cream cheese melted in. Like like what you use. I would generally do meat a uh, chili with meat in it, not just beans. Uh, but you can do beans, just beans if you're a vegetarian. But mix in the cream cheese and it's gotta be hot to melt the cream cheese, but it, it's fucking it's good. It's tasty goodness. It's chili cheese. But cream cheese works a lot, it melts in a lot better than like cheddar. And you still get the chili and cheese flavor. It's, I still love cheese. I'm stuck with that. Chili cheese for God, that's my only chili cheese. It's just weird. It's good. Yeah, defaults are not just one time. That's another good one, but nacho cheese is hit or miss. A lot of not like a lot of nacho cheese cans are fucking disgusting. So, well, the one they had at a uh, Friday Night Live. Which actually wasn't bad. I tried it. It was, I don't really like Key Bueno nacho cheese. Uh, it's got like chilies in it and shit. But, oh, I know what you're talking about. And they fucking sell it in a big ass fucking fat. It's sort of funny. Yeah. It's too much. Yeah. Smart Final started selling First Street. That's their generic brand nacho cheese. And it's a similar. It's not, it's not the same. It doesn't have the chilies in it. But at least it tasted like nacho cheese, not fucking garbage. <clears throat> All right, what's M here? Who got an M? I heard negative two and negative three. Let's see. Let's find out. Does anybody get anything different? Someone's wrong, but I heard several negative twos. So there's a good chance Jimmy's wrong. So uh, M equals, uh, let's go with two and one. So y2 is 5 minus y1 is negative 1. x2 is 2 minus x1 is 5. I got 5 plus 1 on top, 2 minus 5 on bottom, 6 over negative 3 is negative 2. Okay. So I'll go at least try if you see what you did wrong, that's how you learn from it. Most people don't do this shit right in the first time. Learning is often, especially in STEM stuff, a trial and error thing. You don't get it right on the first try, usually. So we got M equals negative two. What points should I pick and which method should I try? Y minus Y1 equals N plus two X minus X1. 
All right, so which point am I going to use for that? Five and negative one. Five and negative one. Okay, so five goes in here, negative one goes there. I'm going to put it in parentheses just so that the negatives don't get confused. This ends up being y plus one equals negative two x plus 10. And so y equals negative two x plus nine. What you guys got? That was the same. I subtracted negative one and uh, and you probably had five minus one. At negative one minus two. Ah. That was a stupid mistake. Huh. Yeah. So that should have been what you ended up with. Uh, for the following, at least find the slopes. <laughs> Or a let's do negative one and one with four comma one. And on B, we will do uh, three comma two and three or negative two and three comma five. <clears throat> Let's get the slope for now. We'll talk about the lines in a second. The other reason for the gloves, Jimmy, is I have psoriasis and it looks like shit under the fucking camera. So if I wear the gloves, does it just not looks like fucking it, when you see if you don't have it, you see it on someone else, you're like, oh, it's like a fucking skin eating disease. It's just fucking dry skin and patches. But it looks fucking terrible on the camera. So I try to remember to wear these all the time. Anyone get a slope for A? Zero. Undefined. Got a zero. Here's zero and undefined. It should be, yeah, I mean, it's zero, but I thought it would be undefined if it's. Well, let's see. So point 0.1, point 0.2, M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. I get zero over five, which is zero. What about B? That wouldn't be the same thing. That one's the undefined one. Well, it's important to know the difference. Zero divided by five is fine. When you do it here, it doesn't matter which one we do. Negative two minus five over three minus three, I get negative seven over zero. That one. That's it. And you can't divide by zero. <laughs> This is just a simple rule that's fixed. Hasn't changed since you learned division. Don't divide by zero. That causes the problem here. We say M equals undefined. It's really like an infinite slope. Uh, 
kind of idea, but that's more of like a Calc 1 idea. <clears throat> We're going to stick with undefined. I'll cross that off right now. Uh, let's take a five-minute break, and we'll talk about parallel and perpendicular, and then we'll do functions. For A, would that be horizontal? So it's worth pointing out that the first one is a horizontal line, y equals one, because the slope is zero. When you plug it in, you'll see you get y equals one. The one on the right was a vertical line. Uh, since the y values didn't matter, uh, it is x equals three. Only the slope is undefined. The line is very much defined. The line exists. You can plot both of these points and see that you can make a line between them. So don't confuse undefined with non-existent. Okay, it only applies to the slope. Other things to know about slope? Parallel lines, let's take a look at parallel lines. <clears throat> what do parallel lines look like? They're like train tracks. They are next to each other. Saying they're parallel is unhelpful. I already said parallel. So what do these share in common? They have the same slope. Perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines look like most street intersections. I'm deliberately not making it look like the X and Y axis. They make perfect right angles in the corners. You haven't studied trigonometry yet, but they're 90 degrees between apart there. Perfectly like that. So if the slope of this line has slope equals M1, then the slope of M2 is going to be negative 1 over M1. It's the negative reciprocal of the slopes. <laughs> the other slope. <clears throat> so they, they, you might see all sorts of questions, but it, they'll be like, uh, some of them might give you a slope already. Others, they could just give you two points. So I'm going to use that two, five, and five, negative one again. Makes a line. So we can pick either one? No. Oh, I mean, okay, that's what I mean. You mean pick either one? Um, for, uh, like we can pick, uh, when you set the problem, the y, uh, two minus. Yes, either one of these can be point 0.1 or point 0.2. Doesn't matter which one you do. Makes a line. Uh, find the parallel and perpendicular lines to this through. One, one. So that's going to be our problem. We already calculated the slope here. What was this? Negative two. Negative two, right? They might give you an equation already set up with like y equals mx plus b and tell you to pull the information like find the line parallel and perpendicular to this. If they do, all you need is the end. That's all we care about from this data. Because so two, five, 
and five, negative one are only good for M. Don't use further. We will use one, one for the rest. So the parallel line have the same slope. And we're using one, one. So y minus one equals negative two times x minus one. y equals negative two x plus three. Here, M is the negative reciprocal. So M1 was negative two. I'm gonna flip it over and put the negative two on bottom and one on top. And then we gotta make it the opposite sign. So M2 is gonna be one half. So Y minus one equals one half X minus one. <clears throat> So y equals one half x plus one half. These two lines when plotted will be perpendicular to each other. Mm. So a problem they might, I'm not gonna walk all the way through it. They might give you an equation. <clears throat> Let's say y equals negative four thirds x uh, minus seven eighths. And they'll say, find parallel and perpendicular and or they may want one or the other or both. Through another point. I don't know, two, five. If they do, the things you need, the only thing you need from this equation is this. And then plus that point. I can't tell you how many tests I've seen where the students still try to use this and add the new point points into it. And it they just start making shit up. There's no equation there that does that. Uh, but they try to force it anyways, and it goes horribly wrong. You guys all have fun going to a rocketry event. I remember going as a kid too and watching it, but if we didn't, if the one that I went to, we didn't want to know fucking eight foot rockets. There was, I've seen like three, four foot rockets, but they don't fuck around nowadays. You know what I was thinking about? It was the third starship. I was thinking about running out of bounds, but. Huh. I don't know about that. <laughs> all right, you guys ready for more? 
Yes. Down with your other one and got a water? Same one as we filled with. Oh, you had like a energy drink earlier? Yep. I heard yes. Was there a no? Someone needed it longer? Okay. I'll say my thing. 9.2 and heard of functions. So we need some definitions to start with. Uh, so that's my shortcut for the word definition. Welcome to lazy mathematicians. You know the story behind uh, Newton discovering gravity and like sitting under the apple tree and the apple fell. What was he doing? He was sitting on his ass. He was being a good mathematician. All right, first one we want to look at is the word relation. Not like uh, your sister and brother have blood relations to you. Uh, relation is any set of ordered pairs. For example, I could have, we'll call this set one. I could have zero, three, one, one, <clears throat> and one, four. Uh, the curly braces denote sets. It's a fucking math thing, it sucks. Set two. It could just be zero, one, or zero, zero, sorry, zero comma one, and that's it. So there's not a lot going on. <laughs> Set three, just for more examples. Uh, red, five, Blue, two, green, three. The point is they don't need to have numbers for a relation. But in mathematics, they usually do. So these are called ordered pairs. Probably better with the other, the numbers going for the colors, but fuck it, that's what I did. <clears throat> so ordered pairs come in the form X, Y. <clears throat> X is our input variable for most things as we saw with Y equals MX plus B. We plug in X and we find Y it tends to be easy. Y is the output. We tend to call this the independent variable. And the Y variable is called the dependent variable. Y depends on the value of X. That's the idea of dependent. Some more terminology, domain. Is all possible X values. Or input values. 
or first coordinate. So set one, the domain is zero and one. Set three is red, blue, green. Then the other word we have is range. <clears throat> All possible y values. Those are our outputs or second coordinate. Set one has three, one, and four. Set three has five, two, and three. They don't have to be in numerical order. Frequently we put them in numerical order because we're human and we like shit and organized. One way of depicting these is like this. My domain over here, my range over here. And we connect domain values with range values. So I'm gonna bring that down so we can look at it. Zero points at three, one points at one, and one points at four. Set three had red, green, and blue. Red, blue, and green. And we had five, two, and three with that one. but I'm gonna put them in numerical order here. And red went with five, blue went with two, and green went with three. One of these is a function, one isn't. So a function is a relation where no two ordered pairs 
share the same x value. or domain or input value. So can't repeat X's. That's one way of looking at it. For the domain for set one, one and four, let's repeat the four. Is set one a function? No. No. X equals one points to Y equals one and Y equals four. When we saw it in ordered pair format, we can see it like this. These two are the same. So that's bad juju for functions. Is that three a function? Yes. Thank you. Yes. They all point to different things. What about Does everyone agree yes, or is there no's, or what do you guys think? If we look at this in written form, this is 0, 3, 1, 4, and 2, 3. So it's all okay because all the X's, there's no repeating X's. There's no repeating X's. So this is a yes. Repeating Y is fine. as a trick. Well, wouldn't there, if you could have a parabola that has repeating X's in the graph, no? It's not a function if it is. Oh. There are parabolas that do that, sideways ones do, but they're not functions. The only real, real reason it matters is if we know something's a function, we know if we put something in, there's no chance that we're gonna get the wrong thing put out. I put in a quarter, I get out a fucking a dollar bill, then a cookie, a treat. There's no cookie for a quarter. You know what I mean? It's fucking like gumball machines. That's a good example, those gumball machines. All the a spot gumball, they all fucking all the spots look different. Every gumball looks unique, so every quarter I put in is a different buck quarter. Get you a different gumball. Doesn't have to be a math thing, but on a math thing, it's really handy because I know, especially like if we're talking about business or something like that, if I sell 200 products, there's no chance that I have like different outcomes on the revenue. You know what I mean? We don't want an outcome that says, oh, it's positive. Like we sold 200 gadgets and we made 500 bucks or we lost 300 bucks. Having different outcomes is bad. So if we know it's a function, we know it's good to go. That's the only reason it matters. Other than that, functions behave less like everything else. Does anyone need another one? All right. Uh, Let's see. 
Uh, other things in life that have this that you're familiar with? Phone numbers? Yeah. Dial a phone number, get a person. Unless someone else picks up their phone. Maybe this isn't the best example. Maybe not the best example. Keys on a keyboard. Press the key, you know what you're getting. Unless you fucking left caps lock on or fucking did some shit and fucked it up for yourself. Shit like that. Sometimes it's not obvious. What about these equations? Y equals uh, 5x plus 4. Is that a function? Yes. It is. If I pick a specific x, like let's say x equals 1, for example, I only get one y. So in this case, when I stick in x, x equals 1 is my input, my output is y equals 9. So lines that are not horizontal or not vertical are functions. What about y equals uh, 2x squared minus 5? This is a problem. We don't have a line anymore. Oh. Try to follow the reasoning from the first one. If I stick in an x, should I? Is there any x where I'll get different y's? Yeah. What x will do that? I can stick in different x's and get the same y, but I can't stick in the same x and get different y's. So, like, if I try the x equals 1 again, now, granted, if you're making a, a single scenario, is it the best way to go get about it? We get y equals negative 3. What about y equals absolute? So this is a yes. What about y equals absolute value of x? Yes. If I stick in one, y equals one. It doesn't matter that if I stick in x equals negative one, I also get y equals one. That's not a deal breaker. So yes. What about x equals absolute value of y? No. So if I like, if I say x equals one, well, y could equal one or y could equal negative one. And both of those will solve that. So this is a no. Generally, This is on the next page. Generally, if shit's happening to Y,
It's probably not a function. Now, some of you may have heard of the vertical line test going with functions. We're going to do that on Thursday with 9.3 line graphing functions. And so vertical line tests will come up there. So when we have functions, we use the notation y equals f parentheses x, and it's read f of x. That's how we say it. This is not f times x. It's notation for a function. What is, question, what is the difference between f of x and g of x? Sometimes we choose different letters because we have more than one function that we need and we just label them differently. So F is just a function name. So this one is open for whatever we want. Common ones are F of X, G of X, H. and H of X are the real, really the most common ones. The X tells us what the input variable is. So Y equals 5X plus 4 becomes F of X equals 5X plus 4. Y equals 2X squared minus 5 becomes, let's go with G. G of X equals two X squared minus five. When we evaluate functions, we replace the X inside with what we want to evaluate with. So earlier, uh, when I said x equals 1, we got 9 for the line. y equals 5x plus 4. We said x equals 1, y equals 9. In function form, this is, I can write it as f of x equals 1 equals 9, or f of 1 equals 9. And this is the more common way. I can evaluate it for different things. I can do f of zero. Five times zero plus four is just four. So f of zero equals four. I can even do f of w, plug it in a different letter. 5 times w plus 4 is 5w plus 4. This doesn't really do a whole lot. This kind of just changes the variables. Cool. 
And then I'll let help them. It doesn't have to just be a letter. We could do something like F of A plus two or G of X plus H. They don't have to be a letter and a number. They could both be letters. This actually shows up quite commonly. This appears in the difference quotient. So f of a plus two is pretty easy. Everywhere I see an x, I am gonna replace it with a plus two. When we distribute, we have five a plus 10 plus four. So f of a plus two equals five a plus 14. What's on your mind, Davis? So it, it is the same. So it's A plus two, it's the same. A plus, what do you mean is the same? Like, I mean, even if it says A plus two, it's the same as if it was just one. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure whatever's in here, I'm replacing with the X in the original equation. So whatever's here, I replace for the X. Okay. Yeah. So if I do the G of X, we had 2X squared minus 5 for G of X. This is 2 times X plus H squared minus 5. We wouldn't be required to distribute this. Separately. Yeah, you will. Because that's part of the difference quotient you're going to see. So let's do the distribution. If you distribute that, you should get 2HX plus H squared minus five. So G of X plus H is 2X squared plus 4HX plus 2H squared minus five. Let me give you some time to write that down, process it, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the difference of squares, or not difference of squares, the difference quotient with G of X plus H, because we've already got it. Uh, and then I'll have you do the difference quotient with F and we'll be done for the day. So is everyone with me? So, difference quotient. And it's pretty important because pretty much all of calculus depends on this. It is based on manipulating this. So difference quotient is important. You may not necessarily have it memorized, but you will by the time you get to calculus, or when you start calculus. Oh, I want those equations out. The difference quotient is, I'll just call it DQ for now. It's, you do the X plus H1, you subtract the original function, you divide by H. So the G of X plus H1, let's look at that. If I do G of X plus H minus G of X over H, 
I have this 2x squared plus 4hx plus 2h squared minus 5. That's my g of x plus h minus g of x, which was 2x squared minus 5, all divided by h. So this is my dq for g. So if I like try to combine like terms, I have 2x squared. This becomes, I'm going to distribute the negative over here real quick. That becomes negative 2x squared plus 5. So when I combine like terms, I have the 2x squared minus 2x squared go away. So that goes away. The negative 5 and positive 5 go away. Wait, that should say 4xh. That's our 4hx. What I should have left on top is 4xh plus 2h squared. And on bottom, I still have the h. Four x, two h, four x plus two h. When you're done dividing it in, you get four x plus two h, because h divides evenly into everything up there. So would you write it like g of four x? It would really be this right here. You would want to write this whole thing out. That's the difference quotient. When you get the calculus, you do something with the H. That's the only difference. We do something with the H. It's if we had five more minutes, I would about to show you. Uh, if you guys want to try it real quick, if you do the same thing with f of x. So we had f of x equals 5x plus 4. That's what we had. If you try the difference quotient, f of x plus h minus f of x over h, try this on your own. You should get um, I'm guessing 5h. I'm doing that in my head real quick. Nope, just five. I should know that. Now uh, that is 501. Have a good day. Get the fuck out and do whatever you want to do. You don't have to leave, but I'm not sticking around. I will be on uh, Zoom tonight at 8.15.